very quick summary. I'll try to summarize everything in this chapter on this piece of the board over here, okay? And uh, we'll begin as follows. The financial system has three components. The first component is financial institutions we draw somewhere maybe a line over here the second is financial <coughs> instruments will be number two and somewhere over here, draw the line and do number three. Financial markets. So that's kind of like we're going to spend two hours on building out this little table and then I'll be using the rest of the board for other things. So, the first big one, that's again, I'm only summarizing of what we already did last time, will be commercial banks. A financial institution which accepts deposits and makes loans. Next one is the class of non-bank and that will be number two. Finance. Finance. Companies. Next one is investment company. Well, before that, we had something else. Number three, insurance. Insurance companies. And number four, at least I have investment. Hmm. Banks. You guys still talk in the back. Soon I'll move you somewhere else. Okay. Investment banks. So finance companies make all sorts of loans, but they don't accept deposit. So it counts as non-depository institution. Insurance companies make all sorts of insurance, but again, do not accept deposits. Investment banks are not banks, and they're not in the business of investment. It's just a nice, fancy, name. Back in the old days in Britain they had a completely different name, but it sounded more reputable, it sounded more respectable, so they began to call themselves like that. They are financial institutions that specialize in issuing securities, I'll be explaining, on the primary markets, and raising funds for big business and corporations. Now these three, these three fall under a special class we call non-bank. These are non-bank financial institutions. And the next group or class is 
investment companies. The first investment company is mutual fund. financial institution, all of these have the definition of, definition which begins with financial institution. So, commercial bank is a financial institution, again, blah, blah, blah. Finance company is a financial institution, again, blah, blah, blah. Insurance company is a financial institution, all right? So, mutual fund is a financial institution that pulls investors resources and sells in return shares. We call these mutual fund shares. When you buy a mutual fund share, when you buy a oh, I'm gonna keep the camera here. Alright, well so move it back in, okay, you don't have to keep it there. You know, you know move it even more, even more. You know, the right side holds this, the left side, yeah, a whole lot better. Alright, so, in a mutual fund, when you put your money in a future mutual fund, it is not a deposit. You don't deposit. You buy a share of the mutual fund. You become a part owner of the mutual fund. If the mutual fund makes a profit, you make a profit with the mutual fund. If the mutual fund takes a loss, you take a loss. In a mutual fund, there is no guarantee of return. You can lose a lot of money, you can use a little bit of money. With a mutual fund, the key characteristic is that you take all the risks exactly as the mutual fund. The mutual fund has no Debt. There is no borrowing, and I'm explaining there is no leverage. All they do is take investors' money. The investors own a share, and the mutual fund invests. Uh, next one, it's a type, a very specialized type of mutual fund called ETF. E T F. Standing for Exchange Traded Fund. And an exchange traded fund is a mutual fund whose shares are traded on an exchange. So you can buy it and sell it anytime you want. You can buy it at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. So as long as it's traded on the exchange, meaning as long as the exchange is open, you can buy whenever you want and you can sell whenever you want. The ETF will usually function as a collection of a class of investments. You may get an oil ETF and it will track the price of oil for you. You may get a gold ETF, tracking gold. You may get a pharmaceutical ETF. And the pharmaceutical company, sorry, the pharmaceutical ETF will track the average of 3, 5, or 25 pharmaceutical companies, okay? It may be oil companies ETF. It will take 10 or 15 uh, oil companies and it will average the return for you. It may be a technology ETF, maybe an industrial ETF. So it's going to be, it could be agricultural ETF, okay? Or agricultural foods or agricultural commodities. Whatever it is, it is a mutual fund which invests in this, in this class of shares or commodities. You got a share of it, okay? And that share is traded. You can buy it at 9 o'clock and sell it at 10 o'clock in the morning or keep it for a long time. The mutual fund, you can buy a share only at the end of the day, okay? And before the next morning. That's where it can be. And the mutual fund itself is not traded on the exchange, okay? That's a big difference. So the ETF is actually both a financial institution 
and at the same time it's a share. It trades like a stock. It is a stock. It is a stock of the financial institution, of the particular mutual fund. So, Hedge fund is a yeah, financial institution, we can also say specifically investment companies that specializes in relatively high risk unorthodox or non-standard types of investments. It could be investing also in currencies, it could be investing also in commodities, it could be investing or speculating or hedging with derivatives. So it will use a wide range of conventional and non-conventional investments, including shorting the various financial instruments. When you short, you sell the instrument, and then you buy it back when the price falls and you profit from that. Now, here is another little thing here. They call these private equity firms, but we got two of them, so I'll write them out separately. One is called venture capital. Venture capital invests in young, unestablished, high-risk companies with a high profit potential. They are usually developing a brand new technology or they got a brand new idea which may work and make a fortune or which is more likely to fail. Here the risk is very high but the returns or rewards are also very high. And the other one is leveraged buyout funds. Leveraged buyout fund specializes in leveraged buyout. That's what they do. So, a leveraged buyout is a purchase of a publicly traded company and turning it private. So, take a publicly traded company. Usually, you believe the publicly traded company. You girls on the back, the very back, hello, hello, enough talk, okay? Next time, I'll have to separate, okay? Then I've talked. Uh, maybe you should just come up front from the very beginning, huh? So, too much talking, man. Leverage buyout, meaning they think the company is run poorly. They think the company is mismanaged. The market, stock market says, oh, this company is very cheap because it's poorly and inefficiently run and the guys are thinking to themselves or publicly this company is poorly run, the stock is very cheap, we're going to buy all the stock, we're going to throw out all the old management, we're going to put in our people, we will restructure the firm, we'll, we will revitalize and make it a lot better, a lot more profitable. The price of the share will go up and then we'll sell it at the higher price. The idea is that the company may cost 50 million to buy. You work things out and after a year or two the company is worth 100 million dollars. And when you sell it from 50 to 100 million dollars, you put in some time, some effort, some salaries and whatnot, but you have a gross gain of 50 million. So that's a very good profit or a very good return if you're able to turn around the company. 
So that's what the leverage buyout does. And these are, at least, uh, the financial institutions, which I will expect you to know, and you're going to get on the next quiz. Now, these two here are generally known as private equity. So, you write it there, well, I write it here. Private equity. So, these two companies, Venture Capital and Leverage Buyout, are known as private equity. Now, words, these are not publicly traded companies. Or, the Leverage Buyout takes a, pro a public company and makes it private. So, these are pri uh, private equity. And all of these here, let's see how we do this, are investments. These are investment companies. All right. Now we're going back here. Next one is a little bit about both financial instruments and financial markets. First of all, Financial instrument is an asset. We sometimes call it financial asset. Is a claim on a business's earnings or assets. So, you have a claim. When we say it's an asset, it has the characteristic that it is both an asset and a liability at the same time. For those who issue, we call the party issuer. It is a financial liability. Those who issue a liability, we say raise capital. So, issuer raises capital. Sometimes we say raises funds. The correct word is It's a tough one. <laughs> the correct word is raising funds. Capital means usually that it's a long-term financing. That's what capital typically means. While in general, issuer may be raising short-term funds. All right, long-term, short-term. Long term means maturity of more than one year. Short term means maturity of less than one year. Maturity itself means that the instrument or the financial instrument will be paid back completely within a period of time. So, maturity is the time when the instrument will be completely paid back. So, you take a loan and if you promise to pay within six months, maturity is six months. If you borrow for a house for 20 years, the maturity is 20 years, okay? Some instruments don't mature. They live forever, like stocks. 
the stalk usually does not mature and it dies with the issuer. If the issuer dies, like the corporation goes bankrupt or shuts down, the stock of the corporation dies. But as long as the corporation lives, the stock lives and does not mature. The mature essentially means when you have to make the last payment and you have no further obligation. So long-term maturity more than one year and this one is less than one year. Now long-term instruments we say, you got to keep the camera moving, is, oh, sorry, are traded on, well, let's use now, I haven't used it today, capital markets. Capital markets. So, long-term financial instruments are traded on capital markets. Well, exactly the same thing, it says that capital markets is a financial market where long-term instruments are traded. It's the same thing. I just changed the words. And short-term instruments are traded on money markets. It's important to understand is not to confuse money markets is not where money is traded. Money markets is where short-term instruments are traded. Alright. Now there is one very special super short-term instrument, an instrument that technically does not mature and the issuer is a central bank, it's called a currency. Currency is also called in finance in general, in media, in newspapers, back in the old days. Even today it's called foreign exchange. So, currency, again, is a liability of a foreign central bank or the central bank of a foreign government which serves as money in another country. So, in Japan, the Japanese yen is a currency. It's issued by the Japanese central bank. Okay. It serves as money in Japan, but not here. You can take the Russian ruble, again, issued by a central bank. So, foreign exchange has the characteristic that it's issued by a foreign central bank and is the money of that particular country or government, okay? But not, country, uh, but not currency here at all. Technically and legally, U.S. dollar is also considered a foreign exchange in Cambodia for the same reasons. It is issued by a foreign government and is the money, the currency of the United States. Okay? So it is also a foreign exchange. So currency trades on currency markets. Currency trades on currency markets. In these currency markets, sometimes we call forex standing short for foreign exchange. Okay. All right. See what else I got. Okay. So I got this classification here. Now the next classification is of primary. Primary market. Now, I'm classifying a little bit, going a step further, classifying the very end financial markets. Okay, I will hopefully today 
get back to it to wrap everything around. So primary market is the financial markets where securities are issued, remember issued for the first time, and we say capital is raised, or funds are raised, or the issuer raises funds. So the key characteristic of primary is the first time. When the, the security is issued first time, the security is created. When the security matures, the security is destroyed, meaning the liability is satisfied and there is no more liability. So that's the primary market. And then you have a secondary. Is a financial market where financial instruments are already existing financial instruments are traded. So the stock was already issued on the primary market one time and then it can trade for months, years or decades can trade on the secondary market. The main purpose of the secondary market is to provide liquidity. So, if you own shares or if you own bonds, you can sell them and get cash for it. That's the primary purpose. And we studied some other purposes like discovering price, like bringing information. That's not as interesting at this point. You know, that's what we do when we study investments or financial markets and institutions. Here, the basic idea is you need to understand which are the institutions, which are the instruments, and which are the markets. So the market will be short-term, long-term, as in money market, capital market, primary, secondary. Let's see what else I have. All right, they have here some very a weird little section, how securities markets bring corporations and investors together. And they say, step one, we can do this, but it's very weird, very, not very nice. Step one, the corporation sells securities, as in step one, issue Securities, in other words, the firm, the business, the government, the bank issues securities on the primary market. Step number two, issuer invests in assets, invest in long-term assets. So they buy a machine, equipment, building, truck, whatever. So they invest, we call, in productive assets. Productive assets. Machines, equipment. Step number three. Firm distributes cash. So they invest in productive assets and generate income, as in cash, okay? So distribute distribute cash and number four the security trades on secondary market in other words in the uh, issuer invests the third step is the issuer makes money and pays now, the question is actually a little bit on number three. I can move on to step number three. That's more interesting part. So, when a company, business, makes a profit, makes an income, well, even if it doesn't make a profit, whenever they operate, they can pay money out. It's called payout. That's coming probably somewhere in the second semester, but now all you need to know is when a business makes payments, pay out, it makes pay out to number one. 
the investors. And the investor payout is called a David. David. Now, when an investor gives money to the business, it's called an investment. When the business gives money back to the investor, it's called a dividend. So that's number one. Uh, the other one is called creditors. And to creditors, the payment is interest. And we'll just throw one other, which is called government. So the government is called taxes. And finally, this is the payout. This is to people outside the company. But the company may put the money inside. So, if you have a profit, the profit can go pay out, meaning outside the company, or it may be paid in. So, how? In other words, the money will be re invested in the company itself. They're going to buy more machines, more equipment. So this is re in, in, in. reinvestment. Now, how did we call those profits that the business does not pay out, but reinvest back in its own business? Retain earnings. Retain earnings. All right. I already explained a little bit about this part. I'm back to markets, financial markets. So, uh, Let's try again a little bit. Financial markets. They can be primary and secondary. Okay, I already did that. They may be short term. or long term. Short term is not the market or long term. Short term is the instrument. In other words, financial market trades short term instruments or long term instruments. The next classification is debt. And Debt is associated with a fixed payment, fixed obligation. The most common debt instrument is a bond and equity is an instrument of ownership. You have what we call residual claim. Residual claim means after all obligations, all bonds, taxes, salaries, electricity, utilities, after you have paid out everything to everybody that you owe, whatever is left to you is your residual claim. Equity owners have a residual claim and the financial instrument for equity is stock. 
sometimes we call shares or shares. One share, two or three shares is plural. Okay. You can buy stocks, 100 stocks or 100 shares. All right. Let's see what else we got. So, debt, equity. All right. All right, let's do some of the basic characteristics of debt. Debt. Debt characteristics. First, debt will have a principal. This is the amount of money borrowed. Okay, usually the bond will have a Typical principle of 1,000 US dollars. You may have others, but that's the standard one. Principle is also called face value. Number two, they'll have a coupon, which is the Payment, not the interest, which is the payment that must be made, like $70. It's not the interest. Now, the coupon will have a coupon rate. Coupon rate. And the coupon rate is a percentage of the fixed value that must be paid for a year. Then the coupon may be paid at one time a year or most commonly, most commonly at least in the United States and many advanced countries, the coupon is paid out twice. We call this semi-annual. So coupons are usually paid two times a year. Okay. Stocks will pay dividends usually four times a year. We call this quarterly or semi-annual coupon. Let's see if we got anything else. Face uh, value. All right, that's good enough. Now, uh, there's some stuff over here. I'll skip. Uh, here's uh, not much discussed. Uh, let's zoom in here. The camera. This is the little table. I'll raise it and show it to all of you now. Is it fairly clear now? Okay. This is the table. And this is the table that you basically need to learn, understand, and I'll be working on. And we'll go there. It shows you table two and table three. So we go back to, let's see, table will be two and these are pages 40 and 41. 41. And we're basically going to go through, now we're moving back over here, to what we call money market instruments. Okay, so I'll write there in financial markets, I'll write money markets. Money market is a financial market where money market instruments are traded. And now we're going to go through six of them. Number one, U.S. Treasury bills. Treasury bill. Treasury bill is a financial instrument. Now all of these definitions begin with the words financial instrument. They usually say it's maturity and issue financial instrument. We say short term financial instrument issued by the central government. 
Now, it could be the Japanese government, it could be the German government, it could be the British government, but in general, Treasurer Bill is issued by the central government, okay? Short term. It's considered to have little or no default risk. Now, I, I'm jumping back over here to write for Debt must make payments on a regular basis. Debt pays coupons or interest on a regular basis, and at the end it pays back the principal. Inability to pay interest or principal on time and in full is called default. And the risk of default is simply called default risk. Alright, so going back now and walking back, treasury bills have practically no default risk because the government can always print the money whenever they want. Alright, we're going to do a few more and then take a little break because I got a lot to cover. Number two, bankers' acceptance. You guys got the textbook, right? Is it in the textbook in the table? All right, so bankers' acceptance is a, we say. All right, guys, too much talk between each other. Money market instrument issued by a corporation, corporation, and accepted by a commercial bank. So, now I need to explain the word accept. To accept for a commercial bank, a bank acceptance means that the bank agrees to pay if the issuer, meaning the business, defaults. So, bankers' acceptors is extremely low risk. The risk is that the issuer, the corporation, fails to pay, and then the bank goes bankrupt and doesn't pay again either. So, it, but the risk is that both of them fail at the same time. And in practice, this pretty much never happens. So they have a very low default risk. Number three. Commercial paper. Commercial paper is issued by strong, credit-worthy, low-risk, very well-known corporations like Sony, or Honda, or Apple, or Samsung, Toyota, right? These are big, famous companies that are well known within, with investors, and they sell the paper directly to investors. We call this particular paper commercial paper. It's used for commercial, meaning business purposes. And of course, it's a short-term financial instrument issued by a well-known, reputable corporation for short-term purposes. That's it. Occasionally, occasionally, a commercial bank will issue commercial paper. Occasionally. But when a commercial bank issues a similar thing, it has a very special name. We call it C. D, standing for Certificate of Deposit. This is a time deposit. In other words, it is a deposit with a fixed maturity. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180 days, usually 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9 months, possibly 12 months. So up to 12 months will be a money market instrument. 
which the commercial bank must pay on the day of maturity and does not have to pay before that. So, now jumping back, deposits. All deposits in a bank are classified only in two ways. They are demand deposits or time deposits. A demand deposit can be withdrawn at any time that the depositor wishes, whenever you want. A time deposit cannot be withdrawn whenever the depositor wishes. It can be withdrawn only on the date of maturity. Before that, the bank is not required to pay back, and the depositor has no right to his money back on a time deposit. So a CD is a time deposit. Now, CD is very nice and convenient because a lot of times it will trade on a secondary market and it will be liquid. So, even though you can't get your money back from the issuer, you can sell it to another bank or anybody else and they'll usually buy. There's an active market for financial market for CDs. All right, two more, two more and take a break. Number five, money market mutual fund. We have a nice short to name money market mutual fund. MMMF, money market mutual fund. And money market mutual fund, again, is a financial institution which all right, now I'm getting back in here. Mutual fund is a financial institution that invests only in money market instruments. So a money market mutual fund is a financial institution that invests only in short term, very low risk instruments. It's considered extremely low risk. It is considered highly Liquid. You can literally withdraw your money at any time. Okay. Now, money market mutual fund again is one of those things similar to an ETF, which is a financial institution and at the same time a financial instrument. So, the money market mutual fund is an institution and an instrument. The instrument is simply a share of the financial institution. So when I say money market mutual fund, it is not quite clear do you talk about the institution or the share of an institution, okay? So it has two meanings. We call this in English, ambiguous. It's not clear if you talk about the institution or instrument. So, somehow, in the sentence, you'll have to always clarify which one you talk about. All right, and number six for the break. Number six is, they're just big, short, consumer credit. Which, of course, is short-term consumer credit. Consumer credit. And consumer credit can include credit card and other stuff. This is, again, non-mortgage, and I'll be explaining mortgage next hour after the break, short term. So all of these, we draw the line somehow over here. And all of these are part of the money market. So these six are money market instruments. These six trade on the money markets. You have secondary market, you have secondary market, secondary market, secondary market, secondary market, and now we have also family held <coughs> secondary market. So these will certainly trade on the primary market when they're issued first time, and then on the secondary market will trade later. So they are relatively liquid. The best and most liquid will be the money market mutual and of course the treasury bill. All right, take a break.